to this beautiful, hot, sunny morning. I love it. I'm glad you do. And I hope that you're enjoying your summer so far. Yes, man, every day. <laughs> we have, we would like to welcome a couple this morning. Uh, Alana Elliott and Steve Carruthers with the little baby Hazel, who's seven and a half months. Welcome to our service. Uh, next Sunday, the service will be done by the church choir, so I hope everybody can make it. Here are the birthday announcements for the coming week. Tomorrow, July 18, it will be Alan Ratwell's birthday. And on Friday, the 22nd, it will be Brigitte Blurch and Sarah Bergeron's birthday. So we wish them all a happy birthday. You want to sing it? Goodbye to Dickie, who is leaving Wednesday. We were having you here for three weeks. We were very, we wish we'd stay longer, but hey. <laughs> so have a nice trip home this coming week, Dickie. And come back and see us soon. Your sister loves you, by the way. She's just joking. Let us come now together in our gathering song, Be Thou My Vision. come together in our call to worship and it is printed on the screen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Give thanks to the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And have the of thanks and grace. Make an offering in God's holy temple that is acceptable to him. We come to worship God in spirit and in truth. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all of your strength and all of your soul. We are here because our desire is to know this is God in the way he desires, freely and completely, both now and forevermore. And 
now let us sing, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing. Let us pray together. Creator God, Father and Mother of us all, hope of the hopeful and Savior of all those who call on you, in our singing be note of joy, in our praying be the heartfelt word, in our searching be the will to endure, in our need be the font of life giving water. Bless us as we lift up your name we ask it through Christ Jesus, your only begotten Son, who, our Lord and our brother, and who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, I have a children's story today, and I was hoping there would be somebody here that would help me. And Kalel, is that your name? I'm going to need your help this morning. Okay? Now here's something we all got to give away. God's love. Right? And you can see that God's love has four corners. Alright? So, Guess what happens if I cut off one corner and I'll give you that corner. You hold on to it, okay? Hold on to this. Let it go. Now, I'm showing you the paper. How many corners do I have left? Five. How many, how many did you say? Let the child please respond. I don't want any adults to say anything. How many did you say? Are you sure? Okay, let's count them, all right? <clears throat> One, two, three, four, and five. Now, how does that happen? The more we give, the more we get. <clears throat> I'm going to cut some more, okay? 
And I'm going to give you this again. Now hold on to these two. Don't let them go. All right? Don't go. So now, now I don't want any adults to answer me, especially not you, the mathematician. <laughs> How many corners do I have left, Cadal? Don't look at your paper, just look at this one. Make a guess. I said no adult. How many did you say? Six. Six. Well, we'll see if you're right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Man, you're good. You're good. Now, if you look at your little piece of coin, piece of paper, how many coins do you have? So we have six, right? So if you have your six, my six, we have 12 corners. <clears throat> Do you know what that means? That means that the more corners, the more God's love that we give, the more we get. So that is my story today. I want to tell you today about what it is. So let's remember that the more we give to God, the more we get back. Okay? So now let us sing, if I can get my thing here. I'm going to live so God can use me.
Thank you, Sandra. Once upon a time, there was a king who had everything the world had to offer. But despite all the money, power, and prestige he possessed, he had a significant problem. He was not happy. And so, he summoned the wisest of wise men in his kingdom and asked them to provide him with an answer to his problem. I want to be happy, he said. Tell me how to achieve this happiness. After consulting with one another, the wisest of all the wise men in the kingdom came up with a solution to the king's problem. We believe you must find a truly happy man in the kingdom. Take his shirt from him and wear it yourself. Then you too will be happy. So the king dispatched his elite equestrians to every corner of the kingdom, searching for a truly happy man, and eventually they found one. The trouble was, he didn't own a shirt. Today's gospel lesson includes a familiar parable of Jesus in which a wealthy farmer has an abundant harvest which creates a problem for him. What to do with all the grain? What to do with all the things the income from the grain has purchased? He says to himself, I'll tear down the barns and I'll build bigger barns and I'll fill my bigger barns with all the grain and with all my other things. And then I'll be happy. Then I'll say, Finally have the security you worked so hard to achieve. So relax, take it easy, eat, drink, and have fun. God says to the wealthy farmer, you fool, this very night, the demand will be made for your soul. And this hoard of yours, whose will it be then? That's today's story from the Lord Jesus. Simple, direct, straightforward. Traditionally, it has been called the parable of the rich fool. And since most of us are neither rich nor fools, we may think that it has nothing to do with us. Consequently, we need to remind ourselves that all of Jesus' parables are about the kingdom of God, ultimately the rule of God, the reign of God, and that has everything to do with us. The God who loves us so much offers us the good life, wholeness of life, in and through Jesus Christ. And Jesus tells us that the only way to achieve it is through our acceptance of the rule of God in our lives. And he makes it crystal clear that the only way to grow into the kind of beautifully fulfilled persons God created us to be is to give up on the notion that we are in control of events, to give up on the idea that we are in charge, to give up on the idea that we can do it our way instead of God's way. Now, most people spend much energy scrambling to get what they want and little effort trying to discover why they want it. They never raise the question of whether they are consciously pursuing their true wants. Now if I get this high paying job, then what? If I get an expensive new car, then what? If I get a better house, then what? Will these things in themselves help me to discover the true goal of my life? It was said in a novel many years ago that God is the first and the last thing and that until a person finds God and is found by God, he or she begins at no beginning and works to no end. This is a word we need to hear and heed. But the word many people are hearing and heeding 
these days carries a different meaning. It says that money is the first and the last thing and that until a person finds money and is found by money, they begin at no beginning and work to no end. In the first letter of the Apostle Paul to Timothy, it is written, Warn those who are rich in the world's goods that they are not to look down on other people and not to set their hopes on money, which is untrustworthy, but on God who, out of his riches, gives us all that we need for our happiness. Paul continues, Tell them that they are to do good and be rich in good works, to be generous and willing to share. This is the way they can save up a good capital sum for the future if they want to make sure of the only life that is real. Again, from the Apostle Paul, the love of money is the root of all evils, and there are some who are pursuing it, have wandered from the faith, and so give in their souls any number of fatal wounds. Now unless we live day by day and minute by minute within the context of our dependence on God, not only for our life but also for our way of life, we are fools. Or in the language of today's Gospel lesson, unless we are making ourselves rich in the sight of God's we are fools, fools, fools. This very night, the demand will be made for your soul, God says, to the self-centered rich man in the Gospel parable. The great American literary journalist, Christopher Morley, once wrote, If we discovered that we had only five minutes left to say all we wanted, Every phone line would be occupied by people calling other people to stammer that they love them. In other words, if we discovered that we had only five minutes left, we would all be rushing to put God, who is love, at the center of what little of life remained. Nothing else would matter then. We, who had devoted so much time trying to store up treasures for ourselves and for a little time, making ourselves rich in the sight of God, would see what fools we've been. And our collective cry, if only I had known, oh, if only I had known, would have a hollow ring. Jesus tells us that now is the time to transform our ego-centered existence into a God-centered life. Now is the time to recognize and embrace God's infinite love as life's greatest treasure. A British short story writer has written a modern day version of the parable in today's gospel lesson. A mysterious figure visits a prominent English lawyer on New Year's Eve and grants him the choice of one wish for the new year. I wish for a complete set of the London Times for the coming year, he said the man. And immediately, bang, his wish was granted. There before him was a neat stack of 365 future newspapers. He quickly understood that power he now possessed, and he began planning how to use it. He would know horse race results before the races were run, and every bet he made would be a guaranteed moneymaker. He also began making plans on how he would profit from his foreknowledge of stock market prices. With his strategy in hand, he took the London Times for the 2nd of January from the stack. As he turned to the financial section, the headline on the obituaries caught his eye. Prominent lawyer dies suddenly on New Year's Day. Then he read the name of the deceased. It was, of course, his own. In today's Gospel lesson, God uses the word fool to address the self-centered, 
short-sighted, wealthy man who planned a long life of ease with no thought of his human condition of mortality. In planning to answer to the question of your mortality, don't be a fool. Jesus tells us that now is the time to transform our ego-centered existence into a God-centered life. Now is the time to recognize and embrace God's infinite love as life's greatest treasure. Amen. And now let us sing, Take My Life and Let It Be. your song, Take Time to Be Holy. Let us pray. Father of everlasting goodness, our creator and guide, be close to us and hear the prayers of all who praise you. Forgive us when we forget to trust you to provide us with every blessing in this life. 
help us not to seek things for ourselves, but with your help to provide for all in need. Restore us to life, Lord, and keep us safe in your love. Giver of all good gifts, teach us to treasure Christ and his grace above all earthly possessions. Help us to continually cast our lot with life and not with death, with grace and not with judgment, with love and not with hate, with giving and not with receiving, with praising and not being praised, with trusting and with fear. Loving Father, we pray as we sang, take my life and let it be consecrated wholly to thee. That indeed was a prayer for ourselves. At this time we pray for blessing to be upon others. For those named in our sharing time and who are named again now, you would reach out through your spirit, using us for others, or simply using your invisible hand, bring to pass that which they most need in their lives right now. Hear, O oh God, as well this day, our personal thanksgivings for your answers to our prayers and for all the good things you have blessed us with. Hear our hymns of praise, our heartfelt whispers of gratitude. We pray to you through Christ Jesus. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. Yes, everybody should stand, please. with love and direct your footsteps with compassion. May you open your arms to others and cause you to speak with kindness and wisdom and so make you more like Christ this day and forevermore. 
Amen. Good day.